better today to talk to you about eye gaze interaction. So just imagine you could take your mobile phone and control it just by looking at it. That's what eye gaze interaction means. And what I'd like to start with is why we want that in the first place. So, there are more than 11 million people with disabilities in the UK. And many of them have agility impairments. <coughs> so just imagine if you wanted to try to touch a touch screen, you couldn't really move your hand or your hand was shaking all the time. That's how life is for these people. And you can imagine that it makes, that makes it really hard to control computers or mobile phones or anything like that. And on top of that, there are more and more repetitive strain injuries in the UK and worldwide. So basically, people use computers and mobile devices more and more. And just imagine you overdo it, and as soon as you try to use your computer, your hand really, really starts to hurt. You couldn't really do it. And let's have a look at the culprits for this growing disease of repetitive strain injuries. So in the first place, we've got keyboards and mouse. And most of us are probably using that, possibly even on a daily basis. But also our mobile phones. So there's something called mobile phone claw or the mobile phone thumb. It's really soft and really unpleasant. And so if you text too much, that's what can happen to all of us, unfortunately. And even with touchscreen displays, when we think about tablets, even then you're not safe from RSI, so then people get very often postural problems, because when we sit down with our tablet, very often we crouch over and our neck muscles are not quite uh, relaxed, and there's actually a wave of repetitive strain injuries for these touchscreen displays also coming up. So, the message of this slide basically is the way we interact with our electronic devices is actually not that natural. If we overdo it, it hurts us. So now, there is eye gaze tracking. What is eye gaze tracking? So this here is an eye gaze tracker. It's the small little black white box underneath the screen that you see there. That's a typical eye gaze tracker. And what it basically is, is an infrared webcam together with some infrared illuminator. So basically, just imagine there's this little webcam in this box looking at your eyes, and it's, your uh, pupils are being lightened up by these illuminators, which you usually don't see. And by looking at your eyes and taking a really close look, it can calculate where on the screen you're looking at, for example, into this little red circle. And unfortunately, the technology is not perfect. There are a few problems, a few challenges, that are really, really hard to deal with. So first of all, there is a limit in the accuracy that we can achieve with eye gaze tracking. So let's say you're looking at the Wikipedia page, and let's say you want to use eye gaze tracking just as you would like to use a mouse for pointing. Our eyes are great for pointing. We're doing that all the time, looking at faces and objects. But the problem is, let's say you're looking at one of those links within that red circle. So, you know, Colombia, 58, or Latin America. You couldn't really tell with eye gaze tracking where exactly in this red circle you're actually looking at. It's simply not possible due to the way our eyes are structured and also to, due to limitations in the technology. So this is already good if you can tell that the person is looking somewhere into this circle. And in addition to that, another limitation is how do we click with your eyes? Pointing is somehow natural, but how do we click? And taking that in mind, so how would the ideal user for an eye gaze tracker look like? Like this. <laughs> so cats, they're really good at staring, as you can probably know if you've got a cat. That's because they're hunters and they're used to look at their prey for a long time, to watch their prey. So they could point really accurately with their eyes. And also, they use blinking and winking for communication. So if you've ever seen your cat blinking or winking at you, that is because your cat likes you. It's a sign of happiness and affection. And um, people have also tried to use blinking and winking as a trigger for using eye gaze tracking to click. But for humans, unfortunately, that doesn't work very well because we don't use blinking and winking so much as a natural way for communication, so it's really tiring, it doesn't work at all. So what people have come up with instead um, is magnification. So just imagine, you're looking at this web page and you want to click a link. 
What you have to do, you have to look at the link for a while, and then it comes up at you, it zooms in, so that accuracy is not a problem anymore, that it's nice and large, and you can, for example, look at Espresso, look at it a little bit longer, and then it triggers a click for you, just by staring at it. And um, another way is to use so-called dwell buttons. So in this web browser here, um, you have a web page, and each link has a number. And in order to click that link, you have to dial that number with your eyes using that number pad there. So just imagine if you've got link 10, you look at the 1, you look at the 0, you look at OK, and then it clicks the link. And you can imagine the zooming can be very confusing, and also this dialing is quite a tedious process. So that's a real challenge. I guess that to make it work as an input device is not easy. But there are also great opportunities. So first of all, I guess tracking is becoming more and more popular, more and more, ice, uh, more, and more mainstream. It's uh, come down in price a lot over the last years. And me and my colleagues, we believe that in about five years, all your mobile devices will be able to track your eyes. So your mobile phone, your computer anyway with your webcam, but also um, your um, smartwatch. Many people have smartwatches. There's already quite a lot of research on how to control smartwatches with eye gaze. And currently the hot tech topic is virtual reality. And when you look at this picture, when you're wearing a virtual reality headset, you actually don't see anything around you. And more and more of these virtual reality headsets have eye gaze tracking built in, so you can use that to control your computer while you're wearing that headset. And the next big tech, tech trend is predicted to be augmented reality. So you might be familiar with this. This is Google Glass. So think of it as a pair of glasses which has a screen, a display built in. And how do you interact with such a computer built into your glasses? Well, many people think that eye gaze tracking is the way that will happen. So there are opportunities. And the problem was really, how do we make it fast and accurate? And over the past five years, I've been researching, looking for a way, how can we make eye gaze tracking as fast and accurate as the mouse? And about three years ago, we had this big breakthrough, and we found a way to make exactly that happen. And out came what we call ActiGaze. And from a user's perspective, ActiGaze is really, really simple. So just imagine you're browsing Wikipedia on your web browser. Here you see a Wikipedia page and you want to click a link with your eyes. So this is how you do it. Um, so some of the links here are magnified. This is just for illustration purposes, to make it clearer for you. Uh, when you actually use it, you will just see the normal web page, no difference. So let's say we want to click the link Italy. What ActiGaze does, when you look at Italy, it highlights Italy, the link, and all the links around it with different colors. So here you see Italy is highlighted in pink. And all you need to do to click Italy is move your gaze to one of the buttons, colorful buttons on the right side, namely the one with the same color as the link. So Italy is pink. So if I want to click it, I quickly move over my gaze and I look at the pink button in the side. And that's all I need to do. And that's enough to bring eye gaze tracking close to the mouse with some more algorithms working in the background. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, um, first of all, just imagine you're one of those unfortunate people who can't actually really use any of these other input devices. You know, you have pain or your hands are shaking. Well, that, such a technology could be life-changing for you because it, when it comes to clicking, it would bring you on par with a person who does not suffer from such a disability. So that could be very, very empowering. But there are many, many other ways you could use it as well. So, for example, medical applications, when you think about an operating room, let's say you're a surgeon and your hands get dirty during the operation, there are so many high-tech machines nowadays in operating rooms, and you couldn't really press them just with your dirty hands, right? So you could use them with eye gaze interaction. And similarly, in research labs, so um, when you're thinking, for example, about chemical labs, in a chemistry lab, very often people are working with corrosive substances, so you have to wear gloves, and again, you're working with these extremely expensive machines. And you can't really just touch the machines after you handled your chemicals. So what you have to do 
in the chemistry lab. You have to take off your gloves, you have to wash your hands, then you can press that button on that machine, and then again you put your gloves back on again, and if you then remember, oh, I actually have to press that other button as well, you have to repeat the whole process all over again. So it can be extremely frustrating, and eye gaze interaction could really change that. And then, when you think in general about industrial environments, environments that are dirty, you know, where people wear gloves, uh, you know, with dirty hands, you don't really want to touch, touch screens, for example. And when people are wearing gloves, they couldn't really use touch screens anyway, right? It's just not accurate enough, you know, they don't really work very well. And there are also some um, applications in public spaces so this image is an image of, of screens, public displays, and you probably have noticed that there are more and more public displays around us. And very often these public displays are interactive, so they have touch screens. For example, in train stations, there are these touch screens that allow you to look up the train time timetable, and also, you know, in airports you can check in with touch screens. But when you think about a touch screen in a public space, how many people have touched that screen before you? That's actually not very nice. It's not very hygienic when you think about it. And you, you probably don't want to have a touch screen in a hospital. Right? Just think about all the germs. And we have, um, a few months ago, we have installed a gaze kiosk, that is basically an information kiosk that you can control with ActiGaze, in the Museum of Transport and Technology in Auckland, and over several months, people have used that kiosk just using their gaze. You can actually use gaze interaction to control these public displays. Then, we were also approached by a big car manufacturer who's interested in putting eye gaze tracking into cars. So why would you want that? Well, just think, you're driving on the road, you've got your eyes on the road, and you want to change the channel in the radio, or maybe you want to turn on the air conditioning. So usually if you do that, you have to briefly look away from the road. You have to look at your dashboard and see where's the button that I need to press, press it and then quickly look back. But just imagine you had a display built into your windscreen. So that's possible, these windscreen displays. And just imagine you could control your car, these miscellaneous functions, on your windscreen just using your eye gaze, so that you don't have to take your gaze far away from the road. So that's exactly what we're looking at. And finally, there are also a lot of consumer applications for gaze. So, for example, think about the kitchen. So let's say you're working in the kitchen, you're trying to bake a cake, and you forgot the next step in the recipe. Now your hands are dirty, you probably don't want to touch your new tablet with your dirty hands. So what do you do? Just imagine you could look up that recipe, browse the web, using just your eyes. So that's exactly what you could do with ActiGaze. And as you can see, um, the hardware is getting there. All your devices will be able to track your eyes in a few years. And there are many applications, you know. Um, it's also quite a unique feeling to control a computer just using your eyes. It really feels different to a mouse. And that's why we leave, you know, similar to the last decade when touch came up with the iPhone, you know, um, first it was a novelty, but now everybody, it's just everybody, all the devices. And similarly, what happened to touch with gaze tracking, that's what's happening now. Soon all your devices will be able to track your gaze, we believe. And then, you know, we've got all these applications, so we believe people will start more and more using gaze tracking. So, what is touched today will be gaze tomorrow. And so now, um, what now? What are we doing now? So we would like to bring that technology out to end users. And in order to do that, we created a spin-out company, ActiGaze, and we started engaging with end users through uh, the Museum of Transport and Technology in Auckland, through organizations like this, and now we're also engaging with Designability, which is a charity at the Royal United Hospital, and they are developing devices for people with disabilities to help them. So we're trying to bring this out to people with disabilities, but we would like to bring it to more people, we would like to bring it to you. So what we're currently doing is we're arranging public demonstrations of the technology. So if you're interested in that, 
you're invited to go to our website and register for a demonstration of the technology. And um, it's quite an interesting experience. As I said, it really feels different to the mouse. And many of our test users, they said that after using eye gaze tracking, the mouse felt really heavy. So with eye gaze tracking, they said, you know, it's almost effortless. And with the mouse, you're moving this bit of hardware around. Some people said, uh, eye gaze tracking is almost like magic. You just look and it just happens. And on that note, um, thank you very much. If you're interested, please try it out yourself. Thank you. Thank you.